Good afternoon. I'm Reverend Roxanne Graves. I'm the senior minister here at Unity on the Space Coast. And on behalf of the Buck family, I would like to welcome you here today to celebrate a life well lived. Let us pray. God, in which we live, move, and have our being, and from which we draw every breath of life, may our hearts and minds quicken with spirit and truth, knowing the truth concerning life, that life alone is real, true, and eternal. We see Janet enfolded in God's love, and we know the light of God illumines her path. We give thanks for guidance, understanding, strength, and peace. And so it is. Amen. Janet Louise Buck got her wings December 6, 2021, following a short illness. Her family held her in their love by her side. Janet was born in Norwalk, Ohio, September 13, 1941, to Rollin and Betty Zimmerman. Her family moved to Florida in the late 1940s. She attended, attended schools in Cocoa, where she graduated and later in life attended Brevard Community College, graduating with a cosmetology license. She met her husband-to-be and life partner, Robert Buck of Merritt Island, on the school grounds. They were married June 21st, 1959, following high school and college graduations. They moved to Long Island for two years and returned to Central Brevard, where they have resided since. Janet leaves behind her a husband of 63 years, Robert, three sons, Robert Jr., Jeffrey, and Timothy, and a daughter, Kimberly. The children all live in Florida, and there are 13 grandchildren and eight great-grandchildren. Yeah. In the 1980s, Janet purchased two beauty salons, and she called them the Boutique, and operated them until she retired. She was called by spirit to become an ordained minister, and she with her, hub, excuse me, she with her husband formed the Chapel of Divine Love in Palm Shores. And they operated that for several years. Janet will be greatly missed by all those she touched through her cosmetology and ministerial activities. In this time, I'm reminded of Ecclesiastes 3. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. We are gathered here today to reaffirm our faith in life as we bless Janet Buck on her way into her next experience of being. It is our prayer that from this time forward, we may never think of Janet as limited by time or form, but always as a living soul continuing on the pathway of life ever in God's wise and loving care. I have the honor of standing here before you today, not because I knew Janet well. I had only met her three short years ago, but because a very dear friend of more than 20 years, Dixie Reedy, is not able to be here today. And so I was honored to be asked to come and help. I spent some time listening to Dixie as she talked about her friend. The first thing she told me was that Janet wasn't an ordinary friend. She was that sister in spirit, that friend that she could call at 3 a.m. And it didn't matter what she needed. At 3 a.m., she could call her if she needed a laugh. 
if she needed uh, Janet to hear her cry. If she, excuse me, we'll let them come in. So if she, it didn't matter if she needed a laugh, tears, prayer, or for Janet to send Robert out to bail her out of jail. Didn't matter, whatever. She was just one of those kind of friends that she could call no matter what she needed. They were definitely sisters in spirit. These are some of the things that I gleaned from our conversation. No matter what, Janet's intention was always love. She was honest from her soul. You always knew what was on her mind. She had a great sense of humor and one of those hearty laughs. You know, those laughs that are contagious. You hear her laugh and would laugh even if you didn't know what was funny. She adored her family with all her heart. Her husband Robert and her grandchildren were the stars of her life. Janet loved to create beauty. She working with people in her salons, helping them demonstrate their true beauty. She was always impeccably dressed, and her home is spectacular. And the work she did with gems and jewelry was breathtaking. Janet also had a strong inner beauty. She knew God's love for people. She saw the divine spirit in everyone, even if there was a disagreement. She understood the oneness we have with each other. Janet and Dixie shared the love of the, 30, 20, excuse me, the 23rd Psalm. I'm going to read it to you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for na his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. At this time, I would, um, we're going to listen to Wind Beneath My Wings, also one of uh, Janet's very favorite songs.
Through my discussion with Dixie, the one thing that she wanted me to really understand was that she and Janet were truly spiritual sisters, that they learned from one another, they taught one another, and they had an unconditional love for one another. As I said, I, I've only known Janet for the last three years and I can say that she was one of the bravest women I've ever met loving determined and I've really had the opportunity to get to know Robert we've had long talks I've learned a lot about him and Janet's life together They actually were married one year longer than I have been alive. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And still, so much love. And as I look around the room, I see all these beautiful faces. I see so much love in this room. And you know, that love wouldn't be there if it weren't for you and Janet. So at this time, would you like to come up and share? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. <laughs> this was <laughs> This was her favorite folder, and you see what it is. And that's her. Good thing I wrote everything down beforehand. <laughs> if I can get through these tears, I can read. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a sweet, cute young girl on the Coco School's playground. She was in her blue jeans and wearing her saddle oxfords. Those are shoes in case you don't remember. <laughs> when she walked up to this guy who was sitting on a bench eating his lunch. <laughs> <clears throat> of all things, it was a jar of junior baby food. The food in the cafeteria was horrible. <clears throat> this guy's sister was there and he introduced the two not realizing what was about to happen. Thank you, Mary. The cute girl was the daughter of a nurse helping care for the guy's grandmother. There was a sweet innocence about this cute girl that attracted the guy. As time passed, the couple, Janet and I, developed a strong friendship through open communications and discussions. 
Her mother asked me to be gentle and respectful for her daughter because of our age and experience difference. There's five years difference. She played a role in our private, in our lives of being our private Pony Express courier. <laughs> she had a large tooled purse, which had lots of small pockets. So Janet would check the mail every morning. Later, she would place her mail, a note for me to read, into our private mailbox. It was my task to recover every note and reply. And reply. And if I didn't remember to read the note, she would be wondering what happened. Was I rejecting her? No, it's just my stupidity. <laughs> On Sunday evenings following our church youth fellowship meetings, she would come down there with us and we would sit on the river rocks across from my grandmother's house in Rock Ridge. We would talk openly about our feelings, concerns, and what's ahead for us. There were weekdays where we would sit under the Australian pines in our backyard. We were doing our studies while the wind, winds would whisper through the needles. Our relationship developed as we learned more about each other. Our love for each other deepened. My aunt wanted Janet's mother to stop the relationship. She said it was going to mess, mess up our heredity, which was all British. Janet was from German and Swiss and other European nations. It didn't work. We had a crossroads to deal with when I first went to college. And this issue that was what our relationship would look like while I was in college and she in high school. And I think some of you have already experienced such things. Every couple we knew had to address this issue. I wanted her to develop without my placing any restrictions on relationships with other guys. So that night before I left for Gainesville, I told her of my ideas. I got a call from her mother early the next morning. She said her daughter cried all night. And after a short discussion, she said she and Janet would meet me before church for a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so, during that meeting, I professed my love for her and didn't want to place the restrictions. Janet didn't want any separations from me and promised to keep her love for me until we graduated. And we made that commitment for each other. And there's a picture over here of that day that we had that meeting. We, I, we did have a brief interruption during those school years due to some misunderstanding. We never did resolve what happened. We don't know what, but there was. We earned our way back to each other's trust and love. This cute young girl became a beautiful and mature young woman. We made plans for a lifelong relationship following our proposal of marriage and acceptance of the marriage. We waited for our graduations, as Reverend Roxanne said, from a high school and college before we married. Excuse me a moment. I got to take, take care of Leaky Fawcett. <laughs> Some time before we married, I picked her up and we would go grocery shopping together for our family. A rumor spread around town that we were shacking up, <laughs> which got back to her folks. Uh -oh. And that was the end of that unescorted shopping. <laughs> <laughs> and we did find out who started it. He wanted to date Janet. <laughs> okay, after our wedding ceremony, we moved to New York City for a couple of years so I could get engineering design experience. <clears throat> in New York, we were counselors for a youth group in our church. Janet felt awkward counseling with girls only one or two years younger than herself. She felt very, very self-conscious of that. While we were there, son number one, Rob, was born during a snowstorm. Our little VW struggled, struggled in the snow going to and from the hospital. And at one point I did, I think at two 360s or as I did a U-turn <laughs> on the road and it's all black ice. So we returned to Maradon 
where I took a job with a Boeing company working for on the Minuteman program. Son number two, Jeff, came on Christmas Eve, of all things. Yeah, there was a fire up in uh, Port St. John at the time, and we went up there, and, and her father was in the fire department, and so we went up there and was watching the fire some, and then got to the house, and Janet says, I gotta go to the hospital, it's time. So away we went. Okay, and then son number three, uh, Tim, came along, and I was working a launch that night, and as soon as I left the launch, I went to the hospital, and he was born a short time after. So uh, we've had exciting births. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted a daughter to complete our family, but medical issues prevented that from happening. But ado adoption became an option. The courts required us to get a home with at least four bedrooms. We had a three bedroom. They said, we don't like the sleeping arrangements. So we designed and built our home, which became the base for the raising of our family. And we're still there. Ma. We adopted our daughter, Kim. Where is she? Back there. There. And so our family was now complete, a family with lots of love to share. And as time went by, Janet became interested in spiritual studies. So she joined a small group of seekers. They met during the day while I was at work. And in time, she became one of their leaders. She looked into uh, doing something professionally. So she liked helping other women bring out their natural beauty through hairstyling and makeup. So she chose cosmetology. In the early 1980s, Janet purchased, two beauty, uh, purchased a beauty salon and attended Brevard Community College to get her cosmetology degree and license. Uh, when she went to college, she entered on academic probation, and she graduated valedictorian. So much for entrance exams. <laughs> okay. While she was going to college, we would study nightly after the children's studies were, com were completed with four children in school. That was a task. And I think we would get started sometime around 10 o'clock at night, and we would work until midnight. <clears throat> and she la later she purchased a second salon. And as her clientele would tell her their woes, she, like Mitzi Gaynor in South Pacific, started washing the woes out of their hair. And she commented about that a lot of times and said, the people, my clientele doesn't have any idea what I'm doing but I'm washing all those issues out of their hair. So if your hairstylist takes extra time after you've complained about issues, that's what she's doing. And she is putting into practice the principles of divine love and healing. She continued with evening classes in the salon until the group got too big. So we opened up our home for the classes. And at times, there were over 20 people in the class. And they're meeting in our dining, dining room and living room, which are adjoining. In time, she was introduced to a program for home studies for ministerial ship. I joined her in the studies and were jointly ordained into divine Alliance of Divine Love in 1994. And thus formed the Chapel of Divine Love, which we served for several years. We had a, a successful newsletter Inward Journey, there's some copies over here. And we had a circulation of over 600 people. We had letters submitted to us from all around the country saying a friend of theirs sent them a copy. Could they subscribe to it? And we did. And Janet would select the articles submitted by the various authors throughout the country. We did not ask for these in, uh, articles. People had read the newsletter, and sent a half a dozen articles. And we agreed to, to print some of them. Uh, there's a, at that time, and there still is, a local uh, newsletter put out. And we had the same authors. And we worked the arrangement between the two of us and the authors that they would not submit duplicate uh, stories or articles. 
and we honored that from both sides. And so we got along fine. And also, with the Chapel of Divine Love, we hosted many national spiritual leaders and musicians for workshops and presentations. <clears throat> and then we learned about singing bowls therapy. Uh, we purchased a set of the crystal singing bowls, and Janet used a gathered meditation along with my playing the bowls to help clear issues among those in the congregation. After we closed our center, Janet and I joined the Unity Church on Merritt Island, where we, she helped to lead the chaplaincy program, the prayer groups, and provide guided meditations during the worship service. <clears throat> she is also available to help and counsel those in need. About 20 years into our marriage, Janet confessed to me that the first day we met, she said to herself, that's the guy I want to marry and spend my life with. Now, how many of you brothers and fathers would like to hear that from your 10-year-old daughter? <laughs> I've heard a lot of comments about that. <laughs> Janet, hand in hand, we met life's changes and challenges. Side by side, we shared our most tre precious dreams. Together, we made a beautiful family and a loving and lasting partnership. And Janet, you have been the best part of my life. You made me laugh. You cheered me on. You kept me going. And yes, you helped keep this family, our family, going. I appreciated her more than she would ever imagine. And that is why I grew more in love with her each and every year, and more grateful that she was my partner, my wife, my lover, and my very best friend all the way to the end. I was looking through a lot of the cards that we had shared, and this one from 2011. Her anniversary card to me reads, My dearest darling Robert, you are my husband, a sweet, strong, <laughs> kind man who knows how to do right by his family. I'm proud to be your wife, honored to be the woman who gets to walk by your side through life. <clears throat> You're my husband, a tender, understanding man who gives me all the love my heart, heart could ever want, love that I can lean on in good times and bad, love that makes me feel safe, love that stirs my soul. Just keep doing what you're doing, because the man you are still the man I need, still the man I love, now, always, and forever. Fifty years ago, I'm still going strong with love. You are my love my friend, my husband, and most of all, my soulmate to grow with and share, loving you always. Shortly before her last hospitalization, she asked one of the staff in the rehab center, how can we have some privacy? And she told Janet what to do. A couple days later, she said to me, let's have some privacy. She had her cute smile on her lips and a twinkle in her eyes. Yes, Janet till the end of time. Okay. The song that's going to be played is Caramia by David Whitfield. And that song has a special meaning in our life. She got that song while she was still in school. And we would listen to it and dance to it by the hour. Sometimes we dance as much as two hours, slow dancing and holding each other close. Okay. Oh, I want 
want is you forevermore to have to hold to love adore mine say those words divine I'll be sets of flowers, pink, red, and white. There's a symbology here. There's seven pink roses. We were together seven years before we got married. There's six red roses, six decades of marriage, plus three white ones for the three additional years. Janet was very much into symbology and meanings and interpretations. And this I did in honor of her. Now, if anyone wants to stand up and have comments, you're welcome at this time. Would anyone like to come forward and give us some remarks? I'll need this. Oh, you could, you don't have to come up here if you don't want. Okay. So I'm Jeff, the number two son, the best looking of them all. She always said I was her favorite. Just kidding. Sixty-four fonts, so I can actually see it. <laughs> Just a short little note. <sighs> Mom, I'm truly blessed. I'm proud to be your son and call you mom. Thank you for making me the man I am today. You always encourage me to be the best I can be with integrity, respect, and humility. You're always 
had a way to quickly get me in check by using my entire full name, full name, Jeffrey Dwayne Buck. <laughs> I knew I better straighten it up. <clears throat> Mom, you fought hard. You fought the hard fight for many years and all the way to the end. Now you're free from pain. <laughs> in suffering. And I have a poem here I just want to read. <clears throat> Life is but a stopping place, a pause in what's to be, a resting place along the road to sweet eternity. We all have different journeys, different paths along the way. We're all meant to learn some things, but never meant to stay. Our destination is a place far greater than we know. For some, the journey's quicker. For some, the journey's slow. And when the journey finally ends, we'll claim a great reward and find an everlasting peace together with our Lord. Mom, I love you and we'll miss you. I need a tissue box, too. And mine's in 128 font. <laughs> Even with glasses. <sighs> Hello, all, and thank you for joining my family today as we celebrate the life of my mother. I do recognize some few faces, but uh, my name is Tim. I'm the youngest of the sons. Uh, my brother, when my brother Jeff asked me about speaking today, I was very apprehensive and unsure of really what am I going to say? It was as if I had a complete memory overload and memory dump that happened all at the exact same time. To be honest, this is an emotional and trying moment for me. I've had difficult, difficulty comprehending and understanding just what has happened. My mother's passing has been a very difficult event for me, accompanied by a storm of emotions and boundary. My mind wants to deny everything, yet it is fact. My mother has left this world to join her family and our Lord Jesus Christ forever. I'm not sure how one can sum up or speak to a whole life. There are numerous complexities. My mother was a remarkable woman who had great qualities and, yes, opportunities that none of us will truly know or be able to speak. However, when I began to dwell really on all the beautiful things my mother accomplished, it was natural for me to consider the values that she taught us all as children. For the last decade, many of you know that my mom was very sick and, and ill, and I'm convinced that today she is at peace and her difficulties are gone forever, but it still does not help the sadness and grief even though she is no longer with us, she has left a legacy of love and devotion in ways in which she has affected our lives and will endure. Mom was a guiding light in my life. And I am grateful for her guidance. She was a role model for me. <coughs> Sorry. She was a role model for what it meant to be a wonderful wife, a mother, and a friend. No one is flawless, but she tried her very best at each and all of them, and that's really all that should count. As a little kid, my mom tried her best to be very patient with all of us children, especially with four young ones. And I know that that was not very easy, particularly with me. I wanted to jump off the roof all the time. One of my mom's most important lessons she instilled in me, much like my brother Jeff has already said, is believing in yourself and always trying to do your best. 
throughout my life, mom reaffirmed one thing, her complete and utter un unwavering faith in me. Regardless of the attempt, whether it was in education or my profession or the complexities of my own family life, she believed in me. She never said, I think that you're wrong, yet she did challenge me, as Jeff has said. She would always put the eyebrows in the air, only affirming her confidence in me and nothing I, and, and anything I chose to do. She believed in me and trusted that I would make the right choices and achieve anything that I put my mind to. By believing in me with complete faith and trust, she instilled in me the notion that I was capable of anything. That conviction is strong, and then even today I say the same things to my own children, is do the right thing and always try your very best. That's all we ask. There are many things that I will miss about, about my mother, my Monday morning talks with her about how her weekend was and what was in store for the week, or talking about the holidays and what are we doing and talking about whether I was going to make our traditional pecan rolls. It was always an enjoyed conversation that we had every week, and I'm going to miss it. In closing, I wish I had more time. <laughs> I recall during our marriage with my wife, Darlene, and the pastor who married us, his name was Chip, and he gave a short sermon on the length of a marriage between a couple. And at the funeral of the wife, the husband said that despite being married 60 years, it just wasn't long enough. And today I feel the very same. It was not long enough. I love you. On behalf of myself, Janet's youngest brother, my brother has passed, and, and our parents, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and to celebrate, to celebrate Janet's life. Janet lived a wonderful life, and I want to thank my brother-in-law for being such a good, great husband, and for my, for my sister for being a wonderful, wonderful wife and having four wonderful kids. Tim, Jeff, Rob, and Kimberly. All four of my great kids. I don't really remember too much of, of our childhood because at the age of 10, Janet would go with my mother as my mother was a private nurse for Robert's, Robert's grandmother. And that's where she ended up every weekend. <laughs> Down, down at, 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 at grandmother's house. But I do remember a few things that we did together. She loved to go out in the boat, and my brother and I would row the boat. My brother was two years older. And uh, we'd, we'd row this 16-foot boat, one on one paddle and one on the other, and she would stand up in the front of the boat and said, over here, go here, go here. And we were, I was, I was only like six years old, my brother was eight, and we were pulling on those 12-foot oars just as hard as we could pull. And she said, I think there's a clear place over here. Well, she didn't mean clear water because back then that Indian River was crystal clear. She meant a sandy place. She didn't like the needle grass on her legs, so we had to find a sandy spot for her to swim in. So we'd, <laughs> we'd get to that sandy spot and we'd swim on the, on, on the days that she, we were there, we'd go out and swim. And, and uh, she accused me of putting this big chicken snake on her one time. She'll tell that story. And I've heard that story a lot. And uh, it really wasn't me. You can't believe that I would do that. <laughs> I would, and uh, what? <laughs> and uh, 
she would she would she tell the story about me, but it was Hub Williams that did it, not me. And uh, if you all know Hub Williams, he did it. But I want to th like to thank everybody. My 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 sister was a wonderful, and she loved all of her kids. She loved them dearly, and 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 she was a loving lady, and and I love my sister, and uh, he and she and I had some close talks in the past couple few years, and every time I'd go to see her, she was always happy to see me, and. Uh, and that's my sister. I, I just love her and rest in peace. Anyone else? Then, um, oh, okay, go ahead. I'm Tracy, I'm married to Jeff. Um, just a few short things. I was thinking about Janet, how long, of course, I've known her. Jeff and I have been married 34 years. Um, in that time, we've shared sorrow, tears, joy, and laughter. Our relationship, though, I would say, was strengthened by the opening of my heart to Christ, who's my Lord and Savior. Often, she and I would talk for quite a long time on the phone, or rather, I would talk and she would listen. As I walked her through each one of my Bible studies I was doing, she was so supportive just of my beliefs and always encouraged me on my walk with Jesus Christ. So for that, I am eternally grateful. I would say one of the things I loved about Janet the most was her laugh. And as you had mentioned, and what Dixie had said, it wasn't just a little giggle, but it was an all out hoot and holler laughter whenever she got really tickled. And this would often happen around the dinner tables as we know. And I know some of you know what some of those topics were. I don't have to say, I'm not gonna say. But think about it now, it makes a smile and also brings me tears. Well, I will never again hear that laughter with her. One thing I wish I had told her before she passed was that she was leaving a legacy that will live on. Without her and her love for Robert, most of us in this room wouldn't even be here today. I never would have met Jeff we wouldn't have our children, Devin and Heather. Without her, we would not have this legacy of love to share. This is her legacy that lives on through each and every one of us. Thanks. Hello, everyone. I wasn't lucky enough to meet Robert and Janet's family. I met Janet and Robert at Unity. Janet was my spiritual guide. She was my, um, she was my Virgo sister. Her birthday was only a couple of days past mine, so I always called her that, and she would always laugh. Um, so we're lot natured alike. We didn't hesitate to tell anybody what we thought. Um, we both have that kind of laugh. Um, we're pretty straightforward and don't, you know, mess around when we're, you know, working with people. We were counselors in the church. We were chaplains. And Janet taught me so much you know, as I was making my path through unity. Um, and her and Robert were an inspiration to Roger and I when we got married in the church. Janet is the one that made it a, um, a fairy tale. She was the one that decorated the church. Um, our church was absolutely amazing in that 
you know, Roger was going through cancer treatment. And uh, we were planning the wedding while he was doing that. And Janet and Robert supported us through all of it. Janet wrote um, an absolutely beautiful ceremony that she read for us. She led the decorations. She, she had her in her mind's eye being the creative person that she was. This is what we need. This is what we need to celebrate. And Robert and Janet, their, their marriage, their love has always been an inspiration to us. So that's why we're here from Virginia today, because there's no way that we could not be here. Let's join together and sing Amazing Grace.
Janet Louise Buck, a life well lived. Lots of love. Mm. The truth that we know is that life is eternal. We may not have her in this present space, but we'll always have her in our hearts and in our minds, and her essence can be felt any time that we think of her, speak of her, laugh about something that we know about her. Life is eternal, and she is still with us. I'd like you all to close your eyes and imagine that you're standing in front of God and you're standing in God's love and light. Open up your hands. You're watching rose petals flow and fall from your hands. And as the petals blow away, imagine that that's Janet's spirit. Janet, we do not say goodbye to you, but good day and Godspeed on your way. As the grace of the Christ abides in each one of us, we remember we are always one in spirit. We release you and let you go on to new experiences in expression. We behold you as God now sees you, a radiant, ever-living, ever-loving child of the universe and we release you to your highest good. And so it is. Let's take a moment and say the prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Amen. And at this time, the family would like to invite you into the hospitality room for refreshments. going to call me, right? Okay. Oh, yay. I won't be. <laughs> I haven't actually been released to go back to work yet. So. I'll be here next week, though. Thank you. 